Christy here with Little Salty Homesteader. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, what I'm actually going to be working on is doing a little bit of garden maintenance. Uh, you can see that I've started the Florida weave trellising for this tomato bed here. Um, so I wanted to, sorry, the dog found his bone. He's like right here by my feet. Anyway, so today I wanted to show you guys how I'm going to be implementing that um, within the other two tomato beds. And then I also need to put the straw mulch, the straw mulch in um, all of the raised beds and hopefully where the strawberry patch will be if I have enough mulch left over. Um, but before I do that, let me kind of show you guys what's going on in the garden right now. Okay, so <laughs> it's been uh, just a little bit over a week since I got all of the tomatoes planted. As you can see, they are growing absolutely wonderfully. Uh, that's part of the reason why I'm not here doing tomato maintenance. Um, I also have some seeds starting to sprout here. Um, so that direct sow video that you guys um, may have seen you saw where I planted the calendula the cucumber radishes all around that um, all of those things within these raised beds uh, and things are starting to sprout which is super exciting but um, I have like a roly-poly infestation now I don't necessarily mind roly-polies in like small quantities because they do help remove heavy metals from your soil if that is a concern for you but they feed on like tender young vegetation like this tomatillo plant here and um, they actually ate the other three tomatillo plants so that's the only one that I have um, which you need at least two in order to get a good amount of fruit set so I think I'm going to have to start more tomatillo seeds I haven't decided yet if you know it might be too late or if I want to give that a try or or what but look there you can see one roly-poly is crawling away um so i saw like a uh, instagram reel or something um where pawpaw ridge um that farmer he suggested creating like beer traps for them and look at this that is so many i don't even know if you guys can see them all like there's there's a ton in there there's probably like 40 roly-polies within that one container and i have them in all five raised beds because all five raised beds were really getting hammered hard by all these roly-polies and like i said i don't mind them in small quantities but look they wiped out this marigold plant and um they munched on a pepper plant pretty well um, anything that's like small and young and tender, they're really doing a lot of damage to. So I put these beer traps out and it's helping. Um, this, you know, you can just use like cheap beer, whatever you, or whatever you have. I used whatever we had, which happened to be a really dark beer. Uh, so it's working, it's slow going, but it's getting better. Um, but as you can see, the nasturtiums are really popping here really starting to bloom. Tomatoes are also starting to bloom. Really starting to grow. Cucumber seeds sprouted there. Oh no, that's not cucumber, that's white borage, I'm sorry. More calendula sprouting. Um, back here we have okra starting to poke up really really excited about okra if you've watched any of my other gardening videos you know that's one of the things that I'm most excited about there's happy birthday little baby okra some alyssum here doing its thing um, borage that's blue so I'm really excited to see that one sprout because I've had trouble with that in the past Cucumbers, starting to see squash pop up finally. I think that one's actually the Black Beauty, so that's like your typical zucchini. 
there's a few okra sprouting here um yeah like see where they munched on the radish there and then this pepper plant i don't even know if that's going to pull through we'll see it ate they ate that this was marigold right here so yeah they really went to town munching on things so i have all these traps uh with beer in them in the flower bed but anyway things are progressing looking lovely we'll hop over here to the green stock uh, you can see i harvested all of the rutabagas what's left in here is kohlrabi because i'm just gonna let these finish forming up and pull weeds um that one looks pretty good i want it to get a little bit bigger this one's starting to form its shape that one is kind of forming its shape i'm not sure if it will completely um, but i have cucumber here and the last cucumber variety here for the cucumber experiment and then the rest of the empty pockets have okra the dwarf okra seeds started in them pretty nasturtium another one so things are looking pretty good flower bed needs to be weeded again because my lazy gardener weeding really <laughs> wasn't successful there, but that's okay. The flower bed is looking pretty good. Okay, so that's kind of like the catch-up of the garden status um, so far. Um, I am going to set you guys down so that I can get these stakes hammered in. I am using, I think they're six-foot T-posts. Technically, they're, I don't know. I don't know. They're taller than me. So that's before they're hammered in and then they get hammered into the ground and they're probably like six foot outside, you know, above the ground. Um, I'm using a four pound, I guess it's a sledgehammer, four pound sledgehammer to hammer them in. It doesn't sound that heavy, but after you hammer in like 50 wax with the hammer, it does start to get tiring. Um, but I'm going to set you guys down so that you can uh, kind of see the process of that. Hopefully you'll be able to see it from over here in this raised bed.
So I have T-post installed, one at each end to work on this back row of this tomato bed. Um, so the next thing that we're going to need is some sort of twine, jute, cotton string, you know, something like that. This is just a garden jute twine that came from Home Depot. Um, so the, what you're gonna wanna do with this, sorry, it's hot, okay. So you're going to um, tie it to your T-post first, and I'm just gonna choose the level on the T-post that is close to the same height as the bed. So it's gonna be this one right here. I'm just going to tie it around. I'm using a knot that I learned whenever, whenever I was teaching my son some knots for Cub Scouts. I don't remember what it's called, but I just remember that, um, I just know it works pretty good for this, or it did. So that allows me to pull it tight onto this T-post around the level of that bump on there. And then, then I'm going to pull it tight here to tighten the knot. Double taut, half hitch, something, something like that. I can't remember what it's called. I'll try to look it up in my son's Cub Scout book thing and try to put it in like a word blurb here. but. It works really well because it allows you to get like nice and tight up against this uh, and then tighten the string really well. Um, and then essentially what you're going to do uh, for the Florida weave is you're actually going to weave. So we're going to take this twine around the front of this tomato plant and then we will take it around the back of this tomato plant and then front, back, front, back all the way down to that end. We're gonna wrap it around that T-post and then come back um, on the opposite front and backs. So let me move you guys so you can kind of watch how I go down the bed here. It's bright out, so hopefully you can see. Okay, so this is the back. And then this one's gonna go around the front. Okay, so we wove it down and back, and then we need to tie it off to this T-post again. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna wrap it around it so that I can pull this nice and tight. And then I'm going to cut some excess here. What are you doing? Hello. Do the same type of knot here. I 
you like to do to make it extra tight is bring this around that way and then bring this around this way. Like that so that your string is nice and taut all the way down. Okay. So as these plants get taller, every six inches, we want to do another weave across um, across the row of tomatoes. Now there are some that are probably ready for a new row because um, they're pretty tall, but then we have these other tiny short ones. So we have to wait for the tiny short ones to get a little bit taller so that we can make sure that they're all included within the weave. Um, I have two more rows that I need to do this to, and then we will talk about mulching. Uh, so I'll be back after I do that. We have a tiny bit more shade out here, which is wonderful, but I got the remaining rows of tomatoes uh, trellised with the Florida weave technique. But before I talk to you guys about mulch, I wanted to go over one more kind of important maintenance task for your tomatoes, especially if you live in like a really humid area. Um, like here in North Texas, it's pretty humid today actually. Okay, so uh, this tomato is already like starting to grow pretty wild and it's actually developing like two main stems. Um, what I'm going to do is what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to find my pruning shears and I'm going to prune off this branch so that we just have one main branch and then in between like in the little armpits of the branches anywhere where there's like a little baby branch growing like right that one right there that I'm trying to point out uh, I'm going to prune those off as well uh, that's going to increase the airflow and it's also going to um, help the tomato focus energy into growing bigger fruit. That's not necessarily my end goal here. My end goal here is to increase airflow, especially in this bed that's like up against the house because it's already fighting a pretty big battle with that. Um, so I'm going to do that for any of my tomatoes that are an indeterminate variety. The determinate varieties that I have, I only have two. I have uh, Roma and I have a Mar Globe. I'm not going to prune those. I'm going to let them get you know, as bushy as they're going to get um, because the determinative varieties typically are a bush variety. The rest of them are going to be vining, so they're going to get long and kind of unruly. So that single leader system, meaning the single stem, uh, is going to help kind of keep it under control a little bit. Um, so any, like I was saying, uh, any of these indeterminate varieties, I'm going to go through and kind of look into the armpits of the plant and pull out anything, um, prune off anything that is trying to grow there. And I'm also going to prune off any of the low, um, the lower growing branches just to help improve airflow. So like on this one, there's some down here that I'm going to prune off. So we get a pretty good amount going up the plant. So if you can see this right here, there's a branch here and there's a branch here. I'm going to pull this one off because that's the one that's kind of in the armpit, so to speak. And then I'm going to pull that one off and this one. So we kind of have like you know, a much more maintained, much neater looking tomato. Now, um, if you live in an area that isn't so humid, this may not be something that you need to worry about. Uh, if you want, if you're concerned more about the number of tomatoes and less about the size of the tomatoes, uh, you may not need to worry so much about pruning off those sucker branches. The sucker branches are the ones that are growing into the armpits. Um, here, because it is so humid, I try to do, I try, to keep up with, you know, pruning out those suckers, um, try being the keyword, I always fall behind. Um, but while it's a nice day and while I have the time, I'm going to try to do it now before it gets too awful bad. And um, we need to do that with 
like I was saying, any of the indeterminate varieties out of the 36 tomato plants out here. 33 of my tomatoes are indeterminate, so I have quite a bit of pruning to do. So let me take care of that, and then I promise we're going to talk about bulging. Okay, I got that all done. And you can always tell whenever you're doing tomato maintenance because your fingers always end up with like a green tar-like substance on them. And if you do a whole lot, then the green will turn black. It's really weird, but it smells like tomato vines. So, you know, it's the good trade-off. Um, so the next thing that I'm doing today for garden maintenance is I am mulching. As I have said in previous videos, I am using straw mulch. Um, the brand that I get is called Easy Straw. I get it at Tractor Supply. This I used it last year uh, with no issues. It worked really great. Um, it says right on the package that it is garden safe. So I'm assuming that that means that it's not, it has not been sprayed with uh, graze on or any other herbicides. Um, if you procure any sort of straw mulch and you're concerned about whether or not it will harm your plants, um, I suggest maybe planting something like a bush bean and then mulching around it and seeing what happens um, if that bean survives, if it pulls through fine, before you mulch your entire garden. I don't know how many beans planted, so looks like I'm risking it. Um, so my hope is that this one bag of straw that I have will mulch all five raised beds. Last year I only had two raised beds and the rest was fabric grow bags. Um, I was able to make it through all the grow bags just fine. I didn't run out of mulch or anything, but because this is like a straight linear shot, I am a little concerned that I'm gonna run out before I finish. Um, so I'm actually going to start with the beds that get the most sun um, because those need the most protection. So that's going to be the sweet peppers and okra, um, those two raised beds that are along the fence because they get much more of the afternoon sun than the raised tomato beds. Um, the bed that's up against the house actually gets the earliest amount, the earliest shade in the day. So it's already completely shaded um, at this point. And the shade just kind of slowly moves across the other tomato beds. Um, so my goal, my plan is to start with the two okra beds, then the front tomato bed, and then just work my way towards the house. Hopefully I have enough. Um, I am going to kind of leave cavities where I have seeds sown, and then as those seeds sprout and get leaves, then I will, you know, up move the mulch closer in around the stems. Now, I also need to leave the beer traps open because I am concerned that once I do apply the mulch that the roly polies will get really bad again. Um, there is at least one bed where they're kind of like in the in the curved part of the bed. They're just like hiding out right there because it's shady. Um, so I am concerned that once I put that straw mulch then they're going to be hiding out underneath the straw and like you know eating my plants some more which I don't want. Um, so I need to make sure that I leave those the spaces open where I have those beer traps set in. Um, that way, hopefully the roly polies continue to be attracted to that. I should probably also go pick up like a six pack of keystones or something, something like really inexpensive. Um, Natty Light, something, I don't even know. I don't drink beer, what's the cheap one? Um, so that I could keep changing those traps out and continue to try to lure in both slugs and roly-polies. Um, but all of the jibber-jabber aside, talky-talky, crusty-talky, uh, we need to get started with this mulching. Otherwise, we're never going to get done. And Lily and I have big plans today, so I am on a bit of a schedule. So this bag here, let's see if I can show you the immensity okay this bag is it says it covers up to 600 square foot I don't know I haven't measured like the square footage of all these raised beds so I'm not 100% sure yeah you want to help yeah okay we need to open this bag let me go I'm gonna go grab scissors and I'll be right okay. back so basically it's really easy you just to get the bag open. Okay, Lily, 
Ellie, don't walk around with scissors in your pocket, okay? Alright, so you essentially, it's okay, just take a handful out of the bag and then you just spread it. Yep. Now, anywhere where you see tags and you don't see a plant in front of it, like right here, make sure you leave it kind of open so that so that those seeds will get the sunlight they need for germination, okay? Yep, put it down. This is what it looks like uh, all mulched in. Anywhere where you see just like open soil spots, that's where we have, well there's where the seed sprouted. So we can just move that in. Like right here, we're just waiting on the seeds to sprout and then we'll just come fill that in. Um, this Easy Straw brand in particular, it has uh, cornstarch on it. So whenever it gets wet, it helps the straw like stick to the rest of the straw yeah. and it forms kind of like a I don't want to say blanket because you know it will still separate and stuff it's not one solid hunk but it helps it stay put in this area so after you apply this it's a pretty good idea to water it in really well uh, I'm gonna wait until the Sun is not directly over us to do that um, but Lily and I have four more beds to do so we're gonna get rocking and rolling huh Lily Good.
Okay, so as for what is coming up next, as far as things to do in the garden, is I'm slowly harvesting lettuce out of there. I've been eating salads every day. I think yesterday I might've eaten two salads. I don't know. Yes, I did eat two salads yesterday. Um, but I'm coming out here and I'm harvesting it, making a meal, making a snack with it. Once all the lettuce is gone, there's probably only like eight or nine lettuces left in here, then um, I will come through and top off the pockets with compost and then I will be planting beans and cowpeas in here. These last three root of, uh, kohlrabis, these last three kohlrabis here, once they either start bolting or they reach the size of maturity, I'll harvest those. We have more dwarf okra to plant in those three pockets. Um, and then as these items start getting ready or bolting or whatever it is that they're going to do uh, I will harvest them out and then I will get sunflowers planted I think that I have 12 different sunflower varieties that are going into these pockets each pocket will get its own variety uh, I think that's going to help us figure out which ones we like the best so that we can continue to grow them or we'll like them all either way uh, 12 different varieties plus this random volunteer that's growing here uh, going will be planted in here the 13th variety is actually planted all along the back of the flower bed up against the um, what is this up against the patio you can see here maybe you can see here where it's starting to sprout um, then that will also need to be straw mulched. I need to do research to see if there is a way that I can mulch these. I'm betting I can use straw mulch. I tried to ask around last year and I didn't really get an answer on that. Uh, so if you know about mulching these green stalks, please comment below on if that is possible, if it's something you should do, if it's beneficial to do. I can't really think of any cons to it other than it might be kind of tricky <laughs> since it's a vertical planter but we'll give it a try um but anyway thank you guys so much for joining me today i am so glad that you are following me along on this gardening journey this year if you liked this video please feel free to like subscribe do all those random youtube things it's greatly helping out my channel i am almost to 1000 so thank you all for joining me so far um, but until next time go find a way to get those garden manicures bye